which is the big story tonight, power outages. Here's a live look at the PGE outage map where about 150,000 customers are without power. Of course, Pacific Power customers are also dealing with this. At last check, about 30,000 Pacific Power customers are in the dark. We want to bring in John Farmer now with PGE joining us live via video chat. John, thank you so much for being with us during this very busy time for you guys. Uh, obviously, this is an historic weather event, far-reaching impact. So what's the very latest as far as progress goes? I know you have crews out there, but people want to know when to expect the power to come back on. So are we talking hours or days? Yeah, that's a great question. But before we go into that, I just want to extend on behalf of PGE our gratitude to our customers who are without power. We understand this is uh, an impactful day. Uh, so we're really grateful for their patience and understanding as our crews work through this, as our crews assess the situation and restore power. To your question, um, this has been a dynamic day. And so as you were talking earlier, there's a lot of trees down, there's a lot of limbs on the ground, there's a lot of damage that's going on. And so that impacts our crew's ability to restore power. So when it comes to the estimated time for restoration, it's really, we're really going to have to, uh, it's going to take us a little time to understand once we get on the other side of this weather event to, uh, to really make a good assessment because we've seen outages, as you can see on our map, all the way across our service area. Yeah, specifically, how is this event different than others? Are your crews able to go out and work in the conditions right now with these winds or do they have to wait for calmer winds? Yes, we do have safety procedures in place when it comes to wind speed, like, for example, using uh, bucket trucks. We have safety procedures that dictate safe wind speeds. So anything over 30 miles an hour, you cannot get up in a bucket truck mm. to look at a power pole or transform or something like that. The other things you have to look at are the road conditions or uh, if there's a lot of trees in the way. So there's, it's not as simple as swapping out a transformer or repairing a line because like we've been like uh we've been talking about there's a lot of damage that has to be assessed and sometimes that requires other services other organizations we have to partner with them so that we can safely make those repairs and that's something that our crews are working on right now and then john when you look at which areas you're going to service are you looking at number of outages in a spot or when people lost power and going by that how do you know where to go next that's a great question. Uh, we get that a lot. And so uh, we have a restoration prioritization process. And it starts uh, with life saving facilities. So think about hospitals, police, firefighters, things like that. Then you move down to other types of sustaining facilities like 911 centers, water treatment facilities. So we want to take care of those first. And then we have a whole, we have several steps that kind of flow out of that to your question about helping the most, the, the biggest number of customers, um, things like that. It, it's a big process that our crews follow, and it uh, helps us understand that priority. All right, uh, John Farmer with PGE. You mentioned uh, you know thanking your customers. We want to thank crews also mm -hmm. who are going out in these conditions, uh, trying to help people get their power back on. It's really a storm of historic proportions. John, thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back with much more coverage right after the break.